Hello. How's Cricket? She okay? <clears throat> she's uh, she's like had basically really bad acid reflux, and she's like causing her to throw up all the time. So she's Is she's not like sick, COVID? but <clears throat> not really sure what you'd call it. It's not COVID. Is is it due to the COVID? You think or? <clears throat> well, she had COVID, right? And then she was taking the medication for it, and it kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And then, like the next day or the day after, she got it again. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. not sure if it is the COVID or not, but yeah. who knows? You know. Yeah. Could just uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, she hasn't eaten anything that would have caused it, I guess. No, she, she barely ate anything today. I just convinced her to have a piece of toast, so. As I get older, I get stuff like that now. <laughs> you know, right. that I didn't, some food they eat, it's just like, oh my God, I'm an old man now. <laughs> I, uh. I, I'm, I'm going to be on a Tums commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I went to KFC the, uh, like two days ago or yesterday or something for dinner. And, uh, they gave me a flyer for their deep fried Cajun turkey. <laughs> I was like, damn, because oh. since <laughs> since you talked about it, I've never had oh, deep man, fried turkey before. So was, it is delicious. Yeah. Well, I hate turkey normally. So. I mean, me too. I'm not a turkey fan. And and usually like our holidays, we have turkey and ham and I'm not a big ham fan. You know, I love bacon, but I don't like just, yeah. you know, slabs of meat of ham, you know. Yeah, it's not the best. Um, so, I, I always get disappointed. And one year they had that Cajun turkey, and I got some, ate it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And I went <laughs> back. I was going to get some more, you know. It was family get-together. There was nothing left, just, like, clean bones. I was <laughs> like, Jesus. Wow. Plenty of ham, though. <clears throat> awesome. Maybe deep-fried ham is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Never tried that. <laughs> I mean, in Louisiana, we deep fry everything. True. Be a pork so. chop. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, huh? I'm all right. Good. Hope good y'all are all right. Doing good. I'm okay. Yeah. Except for Cricket. I guess she's not all right. <laughs> not exactly, no. But she wants to play, so hopefully she can hang. But if not, we'll just end early. Not a big deal. Yeah. These darn kids getting us sick. <laughs> Goddamn right. They're filthy. <laughs> and smelly. Where's the closest thing I have to kids is cats and they just scratch me up. Uh -uh. So do kids. <laughs> but, yeah. I completely forgot it was a long weekend and I would have 100% went into the office on Monday. It's a long weekend? Oh shit. Yeah. No work on Monday. Nice. We get Avery tonight, which means we get him on Monday as well, so. Oh, good. That'll be awesome. He Long and I weekend been... to go fight crowds. <laughs> We've been uh, playing <clears throat> Dungeonborn, him and I. Kind of like uh, Dark and Darker, if you ever played that. <clears throat> or kind of like Tarkov, but fantasy rather than uh, realistic. I feel like someone told me to play that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Dark and Darker. <clears throat> Dark and Darker is really hard because there's so many like hidden stats and like like you'd expect from an RPG. But Dungeon Bones really clear cut. It like there's like five stats. Darkest Dungeon. Oh, that game's really that's, fun. Oh my yeah, god, I played the crap out of that. I haven't played the second one, but first one was really good. It was like three dollars, and they're like, "Get it!" And I'm like, <laughs> "All right, man, jeez." Yeah, I, I almost got it on Switch as well as on PC, because it's a load of fun. It's like, yeah, it's really good. I'm just playing Core Keeper for the 8 billionth time instead. <laughs> That's what I do. Nice. I did just finish Cavern of Dreams. I don't know what that is. Also, fuck the last level of Cavern of Dreams. 
Hello. Hello. She's dead. Ricky, you weren't supposed to catch the demon disease in real life. Sure. It's not real, Cricket. You have any holy water? Drink some holy water. Don't bathe in it, apparently. <laughs> Teabag yourself. Teabag <laughs> yourself. If you're trying to talk crazy, you're muted or something. Maybe the mic's not set up or... Right. Gary said he's going to be 30 minutes late. Doing this charitable work. <laughs> that so fucking selfish. Right? <laughs> I did start Monster Hunter Stories. That's also the other game I'm playing. I'm excited for the new one to come out, but I don't know how long that'll be. Uh, Wilds? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know when that's out. It looks good, though. Well, at least what I've heard. It looks like it'll be good. Yeah. It's more like, uh... Um, Iceborne or whatever then I didn't get to the Iceborne part of that DLC <laughs> I got to it and then quit playing because it was just so much effort to get there hello 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 you sound like how I felt whenever I went to Florida and drank expired chocolate milk <laughs> she's drinking chocolate milk oh my god I'm literally drinking chocolate milk right now and <laughs> I never like hardly ever like twice a year maybe drink chocolate milk this is the occasion apparently <laughs> oh god I'm scared the difference between you and I was that I had that milk in a car unrefrigerated for like eight hours <clears throat> rip you also love chalky milk yeah, I does. love chalky milk, and I was like, I am not wasting this chalky milk, and I drink it anyway. And then I threw up for maybe 10 minutes at like 2 a.m., right. and then I felt better. Rip. Cricket, I found the best thing ever. You know how I've been like okay. trying to do Twitch drops all the time, and I'm like leaving my computer on all night and shit? I found a program that <clears throat> connects you to a stream, but you don't watch it or anything so you get your twitch drops without having to have the stream open but then also it'll automatically connect you to a new streamer if yours goes offline and you can set it up for like multiple games so it'll just go on to the next game once the first one's finished or whatever it's pretty handy it's so handy <laughs> especially this time of year where like every game i play has twitch drops going on People are clever. Yeah. Yes, they are. I haven't heard anything uh, from Avery in the last few days, so let's hope all is well. Well, we get him. He doesn't have school Monday, right? So. Right. We'll see. Oh, God. Uh, Mogging said he's going to be late by about 30 minutes, so we can start whenever. Uh, can any is anybody willing to do the recap for me? I don't remember. Excuse me. What do Let's I remember? see what we got? We got all our notes in there, so oh, somebody yeah. wants to go through them. Please. Yep. Yeah. Last time <laughs> on DN on Shoth Shores. <laughs> oh yeah. We arrived at the Shoth Manor. Door left open. Giancarlo nowhere to be seen. And Mayor Shoth fallen ill in the library. The guards quarantined, except they didn't quarantine because they fucking went home. <laughs> <laughs> Out of town. Except for one. Uh, Mayor Shoth and one guard passed out. 
before taking their holy water and we delivered the holy water to the villagers da, da, da. the priest didn't actually heal we gave him to the villagers for care we poured holy water in the well just in case it was infected all the townsfolk were gathered at the inn uh, Cherry joined us and we Oki and Delphine are no long are nowhere to be seen and the wedding cake is rotting on their table so they have been long gone but where <laughs> oh no also Derek's dying fuck Derek <laughs> Muggy's not here Derek <laughs> Derek <laughs> And we are left lost and without any idea of what to do at this point. <laughs> so, Eros and I were talking, or sorry, Gel and I were talking, I guess. And we kind of had some suspicions. Um, it was mighty convenient that the only two people who knew we were going to look for caravans was Giancarlo and the mayor. And Giancarlo was being very weird, walking slow and all that stuff when we got ambushed. That is pretty sus. And he's not here anymore. Um, and then we got that letter suggesting he came from the university. And then we also know that Oki and his, well, Oki specifically lives in the capital. Um, That's right. So I was thinking we should head that way because there's not much we can do in town anymore. Like the townspeople know where the holy water is. They're trying to heal each other. There's not much else we can do here. Um, and then... Should we tell them about Shoth? Do... Yeah. Uh, Gel suggested we take Shoth and the guard to the tavern so they can look after each other. Um, I don't know if we should take them or if we should get the townspeople who are already yeah, sick. Yeah, that's but... probably a better idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there was all that. And then... Yeah, the town people know where the, the water is, so if they need more, they can go get it. Um, we found that map, which had, uh, I think it was called Leafy something, the city. That's right, Leafy. And Leafly. Leafly. And then there was that other cave. Um, Milper Cave? And they're both on the way to the capital, so we f I figured we could swing by them just to check. What's up? Um, and then there was something else. I don't remember now. <laughs> so I want to point out that I've been, because this is yours first time, uh, really hands off, kind of like trying to let you guys uh, guide everything without making too many, you know, decisions and really steering you. Um, and G and I were talking about it and he would like some more guidance. So I feel like you guys are drifting adrift. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more guidance for a little while. Sounds good. Maybe not so much Do today. Do you need our uh, bowling alley bumpers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just a little bit, I think. We need you to go Google uh, puzzles for toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> And put some water wings on y'all. Yeah. Water wings. When you're oh. jumping in the uh, the divinity pool <laughs> at the cave. Yeah, nice. Yes, when you're teabagging yourselves in any body of water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gel also suggested that uh, that we go speak to the townspeople at one last time and ask them if they saw Oki leave at any point, so we kind of get a a better timeline. Yeah, Oki or any of the others, yeah. if they saw them leave, or maybe if they saw which direction they headed, or right. anything. Because I think we asked, like, one random person, but... Right. Yeah. I don't know. Where did we leave off? Were we in the manor? We were in the manor. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, I don't we remember were, where you were at. We were in the manor. We just went into the room that... That's uh, right. That was uh, a. Oh, no, we went, 
Yeah. And we we found yeah. uh, the letters, or not the letters, but the I guess the stationery or whatever. Yeah. Um, mugging one, or sorry, gravy would like to try to rub charcoal on some of that letterhead to see if there's any like indentation, like it had been something had been written on top of it. If that makes sense. Ooh, that's smart. Can we do that, Crickety? You can. Nice. Do we need to roll something? So, uh, sorry, I was pulling up my map. You're good. And I wasn't listening. The indentation on which letterhead in um, Giancarlo's drawer? Yes. Yeah. So in Giancarlo's yeah. drawer, yeah. he had all that letterhead. And I'm assuming that maybe it was a stack at one point and a page on top was written on. So we want to use charcoal on like the other pages to kind of see if there was any indentation on them from the writing. Ooh, nice. Okay. So roll investigation for, I just want Eugene to roll. Okay. Since you are doing that. Nat 20. That'll work. You rub the charcoal over the letterhead. It just seems to pick up some smudges, a couple of scratch marks. And when you get to the center of the page, you do see the indentation of a couple of scratch marks on the top sheet uh, in the drawer. And you can barely make it out, but it just says, on my way. Hmm. Uh. Okay. On my way. So based off of what you have decided that you want to explore this week uh, time is of the essence true um, your lord is passed out in the library jean Carlo is nowhere to be found I don't remember voting for him <laughs> it is you guys and cherry that are just kind of standing around um, dumbfounded. You have reached the point where you are giving the priest <clears throat> frequent baths and uh, small drinks of the holy water, but he is clearly still turning when he's not bathed. So the water you've provided to the townspeople seems to have made them feel a lot better, but it also is not working. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Um, I would like. Do you to... have? I, I would also suggest that moving forward, it may be a little bit easier if you guys kind of elect a, I guess, an unspoken leader, somebody who, I guess, maybe one person who has the highest, you know, intelligence or wisdom to, to make decisions about strategy and then um, one person who's maybe the toughest meat shield to kind of lead when you're you That's know approaching one. a situation <laughs> so I think for that one specifically I think the standing order is uh, Gel at the front a little bit ahead then me like 10 feet behind him and then <clears throat> Gravy and Harry at the back um, in whatever direction we're headed uh, you know, 10, 20 feet back. Um, and then I'm not sure about you guys, but I only have, I have a zero intelligence and one wisdom. I got minus <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm plus two int, but minus one wisdom. Can you see what gravy has created? I think he, I think he shared a sheet in our he did. Discord as well. You guys probably have a faster access to a sheet than I do. Anyway, I, I don't honest. think he has high intelligence or wisdom so I he guess had a Harry, 10 intelligence i believe yeah we are all naive <laughs> yeah. so, so i think harry's the smartest yep yeah he's a zero uh his wisdom is plus two though that's fine. maybe you could do okay. wisdom as a secondary he's the street smarts one <laughs> <laughs> and you're the intelligent one so you're the, the leader for strategy oh god <laughs> um 
So I want to talk to Sherry and tell her to go to the townspeople at the tavern and let them know to come get Shoth and the guard and take them there. That way they can all treat each other. Um, we're going to go see if we can find something more permanent to help, and that's pretty much the extent of what's happening. And last time when we left off, you said it was late in the evening, so I don't know if we need to, you know. Right, it was about it dusk. Okay. Um, let's uh, do some quick stuff before we get a, a long rest. <clears throat> okay. uh, you want to run over? Yeah. Um, I also want to get some more provisions because the ones we had were taken by the townspeople. So maybe oh, we'll yeah. go to the market and see if there's anything left or... They said the kitchen was fully stocked. We could read it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have some rations and stuff, but I don't know how long it'll last. Like, I think I've got like three pounds of rations, so... So you're yeah, going to raid think... the kitchen in the manor? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't think and any have... of the shops are open. And so. have Cherry go to the tavern. All right, so as Cherry heads off to the tavern, you guys raid the kitchens. You come across, uh, obviously, some store jars of hardtack, if you'd like, five pounds of that. There, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the produce and such that you've seen is starting to rot as everybody's kind of abandoned okay, well, ship there we'll, in the we'll last couple time. of days. Um, there are... Some additional, you found an additional water flask that you can take with you in there. Okay. And uh, I would recommend taking with you uh, some additional canvas that you have found that you can use as a tarp or okay. cloth for whatever you have been using it for. Perfect. Okay, so I'll put the hardtack in my bag along with the water skin and the canvas. And then <clears throat> we'll eat whatever from the produce is still okay to eat for dinner tonight. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to do before we eat long rest? I don't know. Are there any other basic supplies we need for travel? Hmm. We could go, we could go get that cart we left. Yeah. You know? And you're going to leave the priest in the tavern with uh, yeah. the people that are there. Yeah. He was yeah. already with them last we left him. Yeah. yeah. Don't know what else to do with him, so. Oh, and then Cherry wanted to give the weapons to the townspeople, so before she left, I'll tell her to get other townspeople to get weapons on the way. I think you guys already took them and dropped them at the feet of we that did. old lady, remember? Yeah, we did, we did yeah. on the way here. Mm. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and then I guess, uh, what room do you guys want to use? I suppose we should avoid the library and the guards' rooms. Maybe Shoth study up here. We can sleep there. Yeah, it's, it's got a secret room if we need to hide. <laughs> <laughs> there the kitchen. Okay. All right. Make sure the door is shut. Is the guard already... Did they come and pick up the guard at some point? And Shoth? Or are they still in the mansion when we go to bed? They're still in the mansion when you go to bed because nobody's made any arrangements otherwise. Or talk to them. Or... We, well, sent, Cherry, we sent Cherry to... Cherry did. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I didn't really hear that. I thought Cherry was at the... Went straight away to the thing. So... Cherry has taken, um, Cherry has, like, pushed the door open and, uh, managed to get, uh, both of them out, put them in the wagon, and taken them down to the townspeople in the tavern. Perfect. Uh, where she's instructed, uh, anyone that's newly sick that comes up to the tavern to immediately return home and quarantine, or they can choose to stay there quarantine with the rest but they are unable to leave after that point and has instructed them to frequently keep <clears throat> the mayor bathed as well as the guard and the priest with any uh, water that's remaining perfect 
and then um, they know where the holy water is if they decide they need more. Um, and we had two carts, so we'll leave one with them and we'll take the other one when we wake up in the morning. Sounds good. So make whatever adjustments you need to make for your long rest on your sheets. I am no longer exhausted. Would that be... If I... uh, when morning hits, you are exhausted plus two. Oh, shit. Oh. After a long rest? Correct. All right. Rot row. Uh, does he... Something's not right. Um, does anything happen during the night, or is it just... As you awake in the morning, um, you guys kind of... <clears throat> Awake to the sounds of, uh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> trying not to barf here. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys awake to the sounds of like chickens and stuff plucking uh, out back of the manor, uh, normal morning sounds, and Gel, you wake up feeling like you have not slept at all. In fact, uh, any attempts that you had to sleep, you remember having uh, terrifying dreams, terrifying nightmares. Uh, every time you closed your eyes, you were met with the glowing red eyes of a horned goat. I'll suck. You never quite got into a dreamlike state or a sleep-like state, as every time that you attempted to fall asleep, you were met with the terrifying eyes out of the darkness. Spooky. Maybe try sleeping with the holy quill? It's <laughs> a good idea. You can try and sleep on the cart on the way to the capital. Yeah. Let me look at the map again really quick. Uh, Harry offers you the quill in the morning to hold. <laughs> maybe this will help. Yeah, maybe you should try tuning to it as well, just in case. That'll help, I don't know. Um, and Alright, so we want to head north, Cricket, to Leafly Village on the way to the Moravian City. You're packing up, and you're going to travel north towards Leafly Village. Let me get some map stuff going. Let me see if I can find the wagon again. I like watching you guys pull it. <laughs> nice. It was cherry coming. Cherry is coming. My fucking roll 20 is taking forever to load stuff. Cherry, where are you? Here, there you are. Double cherry. Wagon.
we go. All right, you guys head off to the village of Leafly, <clears throat> and you are traveling along the road. It seems like a beautiful day, but you are met uh, once you get to kind of a narrowing of the road between a dense uh, cluster of trees on both sides with a loud screeching sound. The sound starts to seem like it's filling all around you, um, kind of echoing on top of one another, and the ground begins to vibrate. I uh, dive off the cart <clears throat> and try to get some distance between me and it. I draw mm -hmm. my bow and look around. Yeah, I'm gonna jump off. You guys are dismounting the cart and Question. kind of staying stopped in your tracks. Do we have no, a horse crap. or are we pulling this thing? We had a horse. You have a horse. You have two okay. horses actually pulling it. Okay. What a fuck. Oh, I hear that. I hear it. Cherry, stay with Gravy. He'll protect you. I think if we fight, Gravy will still follow his other commands that he wrote, which was basically vicious mockery and stay in the back, kill anybody if they go down. Thing. So you guys are um, suddenly surrounded on all sides by uh, what appears to be a herd of kind of mutant looking birds. Um, Harry, can you roll uh, history for me, please? Why, why do you do this every time? It's a 20, dirty 20. Man, y'all and your rolls. <laughs> the last two weeks have been very, really good. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll go downhill as soon as combat starts. <laughs> I'm trying to get the description for said birds, but my browser won't. Gravy. gravy, we need you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say gravy noise. Yes, that's an African swallow cursed with abyssal taint. So Harry, you instantly recognize the uh, birds kind of running towards you as a uh, major problem. These are Abrians. They kind of run around all sides of you across the road uh, as if they don't give a shit if you're there. They are running fast like they're being chased by something and um, Gravy kind of yells out Abrians, run! Are they, so they're running like uh, across the road and they're not paying us any attention they're just running? They're not attacking you. They're okay. just running, and they're kind of running on all sides of you. I'm trying to load the things for them, but I can't Should get my like browser to do anything. behind a tree? Okay, here we go. So, they're ostrich-like creatures, um, and they are all shrieking, uh, just like a god-awful shriek as they run offset. So it's just a constant onslaught of shrieking. Um, it's really loud, and it's definitely going to hurt your ears with that many of them running at you and all around. Uh, Abrian strongly resemble ostriches, though there were visible distinctions. Instead of wings, an Abrian had small, weak arms. 
similar in form and skin texture to its much larger legs, but more humanoid. Uh, the beak resembles a bulbous hooked beak of a dodo bird, and it's extremely sharp. Most of an Abrian's feathers were black, with orange-red tail feathers and hip feathers, and the feathers are shorter and spinier than typical avian feathers. The plumage ran up a short bristled mane along their backs, um, and a long neck connects to its forehead. The neck itself is curved forward like that of a swan. It is flightless, so it is running. Okay. Um, how are the horses reacting? So the horses are kind of like rearing and freaking out, trying to get out of all of their um, tact work and all of that stuff backing up. You guys would have to actively keep them uh, under control. And then as the main uh, kind of dense population of the herd crosses around all sides of you running, the you guys are all struck with deafness. From the any... uh, intense shrieks going on. Is there anywhere where the herd is thinnest that we might be able to run through and get out? So as you're all standing still and the herd is kind of like splitting, running around you, um, you, you do see the herd thinning towards the back. There is a group of... I'm going to have to find something as a backup. Give me just a second here. What in the fuck, Roll20? Why are you so awful? Mm. I'm gonna just do it myself then. You see a smaller uh, group of of birds that are uh, more tightly kind of in sync, and they are um, moving much slower, and they are coming straight towards you. Uh, they're starting to encircle you, and you are met with said boids. These guys do not look like the other uh, birds that are kind of running around you. They look much more ferocious. They are walking towards you, mouths open, screeching at the tops of their abilities. They have much darker plumage, and they look pissed. Are they looking at us, or are they continuing to chase the birds? They're looking directly at you. They're okay. coming directly towards you, and they seem to be surrounding you. Okay. If I had to guess, uh, based on like what you would be seeing, you, uh, you would see maybe 40 to 50 birds in total that have kind of run past or are running around on all sides. Of these bigger ones? No, of... Of the oh, Abrians okay. in total, yeah. of these bigger ones, um, there's five, and they have completely encircled you guys. Okay. So everyone roll for initiative. Spelling it wrong. That's fucking why. Jesus Lord.
I'm putting the stats in for these, so give me just a moment. If you guys want to prepare any kind of anything, uh, now would be the time. Hmm. Ravy's casting, uh, I'm assuming, same as last time on Jean, and uh, here we go. You guys want a bird with 111 intelligence? Because uh, I, I can do it. I don't know if it's Polly. understand why some of these creatures are not in the thing because like I've I know I've found them in here before this is the stuff I do when I prepare early sorry it's okay you're good also I was gonna say you don't have to do each individual one you can just do one and then copy and paste it I'm do I'm just trying to do one but they have like a lot of attacks oh, <laughs> that's okay. up E. Wow. Polly now has 111 intelligence. Whoa. <laughs> Polly, Polly already had more intelligence than all of us. <laughs> that might be more accurate than you'd think. He yeah. just didn't have a, or she just didn't have like a vocal box. <laughs>
Well, I guess that doesn't, that's not it. Okay. So to catch you up, Gravy, we, uh... Oh, shit, what the fuck is this? <laughs> we left town, headed towards Leafly. Um, and we've been surrounded by... There was, like, a stampede of little birds, and now we've been surrounded by, like, the predators that were chasing them. Oh, okay. Which are yeah, other with, birds. These look like ostriches with, like, human legs. Yep, that's just... exactly what they are. <laughs> that's disgusting. Um, Abrians, you're supposed to, uh, know about them you're the one that yells Avrians run right oh yeah okay. <laughs> oh yeah Avrians oh yeah oof these guys are gonna fuck y'all up I'm just <laughs> <laughs> they have so many attacks <laughs> Jesus I think this is probably all I'm gonna get with them, so I'll put in Well, I hope this works. Nice. Can you guys see their names yet? Nope. Uh, nope. I think the names would only usually only appear to the DM. I haven't figured out how to share those. You should be able to see at least one. Yep. Okay. A Brian three. Hello, guy. Where's your button? Yo, Cricket. Yeah. Just by chance, do you have rickets? That's when I could have fucking anything. It's just because <laughs> I'm just wondering. No, I eat way too much citrus for that. Okay. All right. So, get the initiatives going. Wait, is it a Sunny reference, yeah. Rickety Cricket? 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for so for some reason, I did not piece that. <laughs> I mean, I was, this I was, was like first season funny. Like that name is like twenty plus years old at this point. I think. Dude, when he was a drug addict, <laughs> and they find him again. <laughs> They're like the worst people. Cricket's old uh, gamer they name the worst was people. the Dennis System. Uh, yep. did That's not. my Xbox gamer name. <laughs> Separate entirely. I feel like I'm not getting any initiative numbers. Have you pulled up the have tracker? Little menu. You throw the tracker up? It told me it wanted to send the result to the world there. thing, but no valid token was selected. It always does right. that. Thing. Try one more time, uh, Harry, and then you can just change it to the original value. Oh, good idea. Sometimes I just delete my token and drag it back in. I find that works best. Yeah, it didn't do it. Mm. Doop, doop. Doop. It's odd that you rolled two initiatives and they were both exactly the same. That is weird. No. 13 and 13. There you go, Harry. Okay. I see. You. The original was 11. Do we all roll three 11s? Not me. I'm yeah, they're rolling is really weird. No, wait, it was a uh, demonstrate value. All right. <laughs> demonstrate value. Value. Engage. Engage. Yeah, like uh, touch them. Touch them. Neglect <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, uh, uh, it was like a motherly. It was like nurture, and then the neglect. The... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was nurture to like, and then neg them by like neglecting them. Neglecting emotionally, and then I can't remember that. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that he it's, goes in the payphone and pretends to call, nagging, and yeah. like, right. Thank you for your patience. I'm really sorry. This was like definitely the preparation I needed for today. Um, so you guys are on the road. The herd is still kind of like running past you, but you realize that <clears throat> the herd has stopped. They're just surrounding you. Like they're not running past and like running through the field. They're surrounding you. And um, the different uh, ones that are physically different from the others that are squawking very loudly and um, surrounding you much closer than the others that have kind of gone off onto the other sides of the road are surrounding you much like you are being hunted. No. Hey, so Gene, you you're FYI, first up. We had a long rest before this, so. Yeah, oh, so no, just your sheet. Cricket, uh, sort the initiative tracker. Oh, but Gil did not get rested? No, not me. I'm just saying Gravy would have. He wasn't here to know that he long rested. Yeah. So if he hasn't reset his stuff, he can. Mm, Wait, Gil, you're think... on here twice. Which one is you? I only see myself once. Am I in the yeah, initiative for some reason, 17 once. and 11. Oh, I see him. Should be I rolled at 11. I only see his 7, his 11. Maybe it's on a different layer? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, so I have Gene at 20. Is that correct? Nope. I'm at 8. Maybe this is... Okay. We'll, we'll delete that. Uh, the Abrians, that has to be accurate. And then Gravy at 17? Nope. Uh, no, I got an 8. It must just be the old tracker. I think yeah, I think your birds are us or something. Uh, okay, so I think it just has data from a different a initiative roll. Yeah, it does because it has um, Harry at a seventeen. Mm -mm. Harry, you're at thirteen. That says you're at an eleven. It's weird. I have eleven. I manually changed it because I rolled it once and it didn't. Oh, okay. All right. And it didn't take so. I did it again. Gal, you're also an 11? Yep. Gravy and Junior at 8? Yep. Yeah. Oof. Yep. 
So the uh, Avery number two uh, comes up and gets in Jean's face, and then he uh, opens his mouth uh, really loudly and lets out the worst uh, vibrational shriek you've ever heard. Why are these not seeing me? So you have to make a con saving throw. Oh, that was what I was trying to link. Okay, here, my bad. My roll 20 window is also like super fucked up. So like <laughs> everything everything on my screen is spread out on all sides of the screen. So like my like type to chat window is like the size of one oh, letter yeah, yeah. wide and then or uh, tall and then like the whole screen wide. No, oh, yeah, it did that to me last week. Do you guys it was in the middle this... of the screen. Yeah. Do you guys see this uh, link I posted in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, wait. Don't look at it. Oh. Yeah. I remembered why I got rid of it. <laughs> it gives us all the meta information. Yep. Stop looking at it. I only have it open. I'm not looking. Okay. So the shriek of a lone Abrian is supernaturally loud and distressing, and Abrian can shriek as a standard action. Uh, you need to make... Well, this is totally wrong from what I saw. So that's not going to matter if you read it or not. Perfect. A brilliant and way to keep us from crash. cheating. Incorrect documentation. Perfect. All right, so you need to make a... Ow. Don't chomp my hand. That's mean. Constitution saving throw. Eight. Everyone? Or... Okay. So I need Jean, Gravy, Harry, Cherry. I need everybody to make a constitution saving throw. Can I can I use ins my inspiration on that? Sure. So it's an extra d6, right? Uh, when the DM gives you inspiration, it's just advantage. Oh, well then. Yeah, bardic inspiration that. just happens to have the same name. Try again, then. That's better. So, Gel and Gravy... And let me have Chabe. I didn't put Cherry in here. God damn. Gail, what's your exhaustion? I'm at two. No. Oh, you don't have disadvantage on saves yet. No. Just letting you know. Yeah, I know. It just, it's all automatically rolling uh, two dice every time. So. I just want to make sure you didn't sh screw yourself. No, it's on a, a disadvantage on ability checks and half speed right now. Sucks. Did she get put in the list? There she is, okay. I don't know if this so makes cherry, any sense. So Cherry and um, Gravy, you both are deafened for one hour. <laughs> by the massive shriek that has kind of blasted straight in a cone 
towards you guys. Uh, Gail and Jean and Harry, you all manage to kind of turn in time to not take the full brunt against your eardrums. Ugh. Uh, and this Avrian is uh, right here in front of Gravy. Uh, the third one. Did it move or was it already there? It uh, it moved. Do I get an attack? Is it okay if I just put myself like on a square? You can take your attack of opportunity if you'd like. Nice. And then the third Abrian. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Not one. <laughs> Is going to, uh... Gravy, you're not in a square right now. Yeah, you... I just wanted to double check if I could move. Yeah, yeah. You stay like, I, I just want to put myself in a square, that's it. So this, uh, this Abrian's gonna turn and, um, kick you with its back feet. No. <laughs> yes. Uh, yep, yeah, that's gonna hit. And it's... Kick does... Woof. <clears throat> if you just click on Whoa. kick, it should roll. <sighs> Fuck. Sorry. God damn. It already rolled. Wait, then what was that to hit? It was the 17 to... Oh, I'm saying if you click kick in chat, it'll roll the kick damage. Oh, yeah, thank you, sorry. Jesus! So you take 11 damage, it kind of blasts oh, through uh, no. your ass and uh, rattles your whole body. Almost killed it. <laughs> uh, Cherry doesn't really... hesitate here and uh she uses her boo -doo -doo boop Here he swings a short sword at the Abrian um, behind her here. She's got to be in a spot, too. And she misses. Gel, it's you. All right. I'm going to move here right in front of Harry. Uh, I'm going to rage. And the one between me and Jean and like connected to Gravy, it doesn't have a name on it. Is that bird number two? Uh, thank you. It is bird number two. Okay. I'm going to. See it now? Yes. I'm yeah. going to attack with this maybe curse sword. I don't know. And see <laughs> what happens. That is a 23 to hit. You hit. Your sword connects. And that is a 13. What, what was this, a 7? I can't remember on this. Um, Gene, is that added to that or not? No, that's the, if For you swung one-handed rather than two. Oh, okay, okay, got it. So as you swing your sword, um, you completely take this uh, Abrian unawares as he's facing Gravy. Um, 
and you were 13 is going to kill him. So what does this look like? What? Nice. Um, <laughs> it looks like <gasps> and then, a lot of blood and <laughs> probably some trauma for Gravy being had seen a bird splashed right in half right in front of him. So oh, your no. your badass sword just slices directly through the Abrian and a uh, splatter of blood goes across Gravy's uh, face as he's standing in front of it. Half of the Abrian slides off of the top of the bird onto the ground. Ew. It is dead, so. That's brutal. And, uh, yeah, that's my turn. Um, did you use Great Weapon Master for that attack or not? I don't have it yet. <clears throat> oh, right, this next level, my bad. Jeez, man, way to insult him. <laughs> this Abrian runs over to Gene and just immediately rushing uh, towards his face, kind of uh, gnashes out at him with his beak. That'll hit. There's four piercing damage. Okay. That's it for his turn, Harry. I will take aim at Abrian 3. All of the Abrians standing around on the sides of the road now are all kind of like stamping their feet, kind of creating like uh, the dust in the road Um. and the dirt to kind of like rise a little bit. And it starts to get a little bit hazy. They're all like making this uh, not not quite as loud as the shriek that deafened you, but this like high pitched like humming like yeah! sound and it uh in chorus is starting to like really get to you guys. Um that me. And Harry, you're <laughs> taking aim at three? Yeah. Good thing you can't hear any of that, Harry. I can. Oh, sorry. I thought we were deaf. Just you, scrub. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. Going... They re rolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Hunter's Mark uh, 3. Okay. And that's just nothing to do for that. I just kill a trap. Just so I forgot to tell you as well, if you were deafened by the um, Abrian, you're also stunned until you're. Oh, Extra. that's that's good to know. <laughs> I am stunned. Uh, also, if you are if you survived the shriek, you're immune to, to roll that. the shriek of all of them for twenty four hours. Da, da, da. Okay. Alright, anyway, I'll try and shoot it, now that I've marked it, with the short bow, 30-20 to hit. It's going to hit? And 7 plus a d6 for Hunter's Mark. Damn! You're going to kill it as well! Dang! I want you to describe your fancy arrow breezing past Gravy's face. Right in its head. Right in its head. And it right falls over. Head. Dead, though. All shrieks stop. Can't wait to see what this does to Gravy's psyche. Bad things. <laughs> I think I'm I'm not even registering anything. I'm stunned. I'm dead. <laughs> what? Like, what happened? We're going to end this fight <laughs> and I'm just going to see like a dead village of birds. Not again. Not again. Probably for the best you're stunned and dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, Abrian 4 here uh, turns and hoists its feet up, kicks Gale right in the back. Sixteen to hit. It does nine damage. Okay, so that's four. I mean, I'm assuming it's four. What type of damage was it? it? Was I mean, unless it's psyche, it was four. So it's slashing damage. I don't know why it didn't come through there. Its talons slice through you with a blunt attack to the belly. Ow. Oh, it's because it has slashing in there automatically, and I just didn't retype it. There we go. All right, Gene. Um, <clears throat> the shrieking from the birds has stopped. The stomping from the birds has stopped. There is a faint dust cloud. Rising all around you guys. Still. Okay. Uh, I'm going to attack the one in front of me. <laughs> I'm going to reroll that with luck. Sixteen hit. Sixteen hits. Twenty two damage. You're going to just obliterate right. this thing. <laughs> and then I'm going to... Slashing damage. So... Go ahead. What was this ability? That's my great sword with Great Weapon Master. Alright. So your great sword uh, does 22 slashing damage and just cuts the thing in half. Awesome. I'm going to move down to the one attacking Cherry. And I'm going to use my bonus action to attack again. Okay. 16 hit. 16 hits. 19 damage. You're also going to obliterate that with that sword. Nice. These things are weak uh, in defense, but fast and strong. And that's my turn. Gravy. Really? All you can really tell through the dust is you just see uh, your team here slicing through fucking birds. You see feathers kind of flying and blood splattering everywhere, including across your face. Uh, you're stunned and can't move, and it's bringing back some really terrible memories for you. He's been traumatized. Anything you would like to do? I don't think you can do anything when you're stunned. But... Yeah, no, my turn ends. <clears throat> can you prepare anything? Uh, so stunned, maybe in this case, would go until the end of my turn because I failed the shriek, unless it's a continuing stunned effect, something like that. But I no. think you said at the end of my turn. Yep. So yeah, essentially <laughs> my turn is like quote-unquote wasted but then i regain my consciousness type of thing so yeah can't do anything and i just wait there's one avrian remaining uh this close to you uh there's just kind of dead silence amongst the flock of birds at this point he uh Still turned behind um, Gel and uh, Cherry. Kind of runs around up to him and just begins swinging her sword. She uh, trips on a root at the base of the tree and face plants. 
Oh. Behind Gel. Gel. And I um attack it. Twenty two to hit. That hits. Seventeen slashing damage. Or fifteen slashing damage to rage. And your big ass sword again just slices through this Abrian. They are of no match to you. And the remaining flock. Oh, whoa, you killed Cherry. Sorry, Cherry. My bad. (laughs) No! (laughs) Remaining flock takes off in terror. (laughs) Shit. Let's take a quick five. Avery's here to talk to me. Sounds good. I'm back.
I'm here when you guys are ready. Hey. Oh. Feeling okay. I feel like, uh, have you ever been seasick? Yes. I feel like I'm seasick, but sitting down. Ugh. You know how, like, when you're going to, uh, barf, your mouth starts watering, you're, like, salivating and stuff? Yes. So I have those two things combined, and I have to, like, mentally power through it to be like, you're not going to throw up, because you'll throw up all of your medicine. Mm. I just am barely getting through each one. <laughs> so stupid. Well, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Ever thought about just, like, not getting COVID? Well, the problem is, is I have an uh, immune disorder, so I take immune suppressants. So, uh, if I get sick or get in contact with anything, I get sick for a really long time. Like, Oh, yeah, for I, sure. But I mean, like, you know, just, like, be better. Willpower. Just, just be a better, better person. I, I'm using all the willpower I can to, like, not <laughs> barf through everything. But I'm getting everything I can possibly come in contact with in the last couple of weeks. Mm. Iris, are you back? Yes. Okay. G, you're here? Yep. All right. So the fight is over. The uh, group of the herd has moved on. Uh, I turn to Gel and I say, get a Fargo and let's see how these birds taste. Oh, no. All right. I agree, but you're able to move again. That ain't right. Uh, I'm just gonna say, since it was pretty quick, uh, Gravy is uh, stunned in his standing spot uh, from a mental prison for another five to ten seconds before he, like, shakes out of it. Uh, remember, you were deafened for an hour uh, as is Cherry. Mm hmm Cherry kind of shakes her head. She's, like, like growling, trying to get something out of her ears. Uh, she's a really high-pitched squealing still. What was seeing those normal? Do I know if those are normally around here? <laughs> those birds. So from your history check, you know that that is absolutely not normal that uh that's not something that's been seen for quite a long time it's kind of a thing of legend um i, I don't think this is normal <laughs> i think the not normal was becoming normal They're around six feet tall and about 250 pounds this says Big birds. Uh, does anybody want to uh, get a closer look, or what do you want to do with the bodies? Do you want to just keep moving? What? I was wondering if we could butcher them, or I don't know. Yeah, I want to. There's any... any. Do they have oh. any like hide They're not or carrying anything. Like anything do they? <laughs> uh, they're not carrying anything at all. From what you see, they're just uh, just bird feathers. Most of them are cut in half already. Uh, mm -hmm. so there's kind of blood and feathers everywhere. It's a very dark, almost black blood. But you do know um, from your understanding of these birds that they are absolutely not normal as they are abyssal creatures. Mm. Known to be incredibly evil. So they're not from here. Not from here, and they travel in packs. Well, There's no yeah. reason why they should have been here. Can we investigate them, I guess? Or? There's nothing to investigate. Okay. What do they taste like? 
So you are going to attempt to cook them? Yes. And eat them? Yes. Correct. All right. Okay, and I'm going to make a fire, I guess. So uh, everybody that's eating them, give me a survival check. Oh, not a survival check. I'm sorry, a constitution check. Saving throw? Uh, constitution roll. Saving roll, how, yes. Before Harry takes a bite, how does it smell? Six. Mm, it's too late. <laughs> okay. It smells disgusting. It does, in fact, smell disgusting uh, as it's cooking. I take a nibble. <laughs> and I assume... I can spit it out before I kill myself. Gravy? Uh... On top <laughs> of gonna eat birds in the I don't think. general, I <laughs> decline. And, Fairy does uh, as well, because she doesn't even, uh... She's more concerned with trying to get her hearing back. So Cherry, Gravy... Um, Gel and Harry, um, you guys appear to be fine. Uh, Gel and Harry, you guys severely dislike the taste and kind of spit it out as soon as you start eating it. It tastes rotten. Um, Jean, unfortunately, you take a couple of bites and you have exhaustion until your next uh, rest. You got a bad belly, boy. Gross. It's just like, you can power through the initial flavor, I'm sure. <laughs> There's gotta it's be a, a little overcooked. Taste. Question, during the combat, did I notice anything while utilizing the sword to kill those? The only thing that you noticed was that it swings like a dream as you're attuned to it, and that uh, you do an insane amount of damage. Okay. Feels good. All right, so you guys gonna just stay here on the road? I guess when we pack up and I yeah. mean, what time of the day is it? Is still early or? Uh, it's about ten o'clock at night at this point. Oh. Cool. And we should take Wait, no, hat. you guys. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you guys had a long rest and you left in the morning, so it's about ten o'clock in the morning. Oh, let's keep going. Okay. Keep on yep. going. Um, when the party walks away from the fire uh gravy has a brief moment where he looks at some of the chicken meat and <laughs> he kind of reaches out and he like plucks some of it you know he gets like his <laughs> fingers like greasy and he like goes to bite it and then he's like shakes his head he drops the the meat on the ground and he just like runs to catch up with the party <laughs> Gross. Did you happen to feed them? No dinner. Okay. Those pigs going ape shit. Would you mind? Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna work on a map really quick while you guys are traveling to the village of Leafly. Can I um before we leave? Um, since you're working on that, can I take the opportunity to see if I can speak to an animal and have it scout ahead? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look for another bird. Not a bird like the birds we just saw, but a, like a normal, normal bird to speak to. And I'm going to cast the uh, Speaks with Animals ritual. Do I see? Do I see any bird to speak to in these trees or anywhere around? So you see a bluebird kind of uh, sitting on a branch above you guys, kind of twittering, like it's reporting what it just witnessed um, to the rest of the birds in the area. Um, Caught your eye. Hi, hi there, uh, Mr. Blue or Mrs. Blue. I don't presume. Uh, the bird looks kind of stunned and flies over and uh, lands closer to you, like tilts its head like, why can I understand you? Can you understand me? 
Yes, I can. Um, mm. I'm sorry for all the disturbance in the area. We we were um, put off by this. I hope it didn't disturb you or any of your friends too much. No, we appreciate you clearing this evil out of the area, of course. How can I be of service? Uh, no problem. Um, uh, my friends and I are, are, are a bit weary as we travel uh, ahead. Um, uh, we're traveling to the west, is it, from here, I think? So I, I just kind of point in the direction that we're, we're headed. And I'm wondering, um, if you or your friends, if you could uh, maybe fly ahead and and see if you see anything of note or anything in the general area that you could make us aware of before we uh, travel travel out. I would be happy to scout for you. Um, uh, unfortunately, I think most of my friends are a little too afraid if they've already taken off, but I'd be happy to do a loop for you and come back. Oh, that'd be much appreciated. Uh, he him... flies off. Okay. What are you gonna? What do you want? I was give gonna him? give him a little bit of uh, food or something that I have. Or, or... do we have like he anything? Kind of s- swirls back around and takes a a bit of the hard tack you offer. And chitters, lands, chews it up, takes off again. Tell the guys what I just had the conversation with the birds so they know what we were just talking about. Because it probably looked a little weird to them. I've seen you do this before. And I'm only staring with fascination. (laughs) And I look over at Polly and say, Polly, I hope you're okay. I hope you weren't too upset. I'm assuming Polly's around. Yeah, Polly squats. Yeah. Sorry, this is the one we can use to do an ass load of preparation, and I did not a minute. Nice. <laughs> so you guys come to uh you're traveling through you continue to travel through the forest kind of unharmed another uh six hours or so uh and then you come to kind of like a clearing where the road you can tell kind of divulges off to the side and there is um, two large buildings and what appears to be a few kind of huts in the area. There also appears to be, let me give you a vision. That did not work.
All right, you guys can see now, right? Yep, a little village. All right, so there's a little village here in the clearing. Um, you see a small sign that says, uh, Welcome to the village of Leafly. It is hand painted in the very center of a small grass patch in front of gravy. And <clears throat> uh, everything seems quiet. You do see off to the right hand side, there's kind of a wooden fence, uh, what appears to be a gate and uh, a sign that's kind of mostly like charred black and burned and then the ground is all burned uh, in a, a big patch like a building that had been burned down. You see uh, ahead of you a kind of smaller figure tolling towards you um, from outside of one of the uh, buildings and it appears that she catches your eye and she's kind of coming out to meet you. She's like, ho oh, there! She's like a very old, uh, very short woman and she's carrying a basket with a bunch of different little things in it, some mushrooms, some flowers. She's hobbling towards you like very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. How, how can I help you? G'day, madam. Uh, my name is Jean. It's nice to meet you. Um, and you see behind her on the fence, the bluebird that Gel sent. Mm -hmm. Just kind of sitting there, like twittering, pretending like it doesn't understand you. Nice. Um, I just uh, motion over to it and just like say one one moment type thing as we. Are you gonna uh, go past her and try to go? No, over I'm and... I, I'm just, I'm not gonna interrupt this conversation. I'm just oh, okay. like, asking you know letting the bird know that I see it with like a hand gesture or something. All right, like it's that. over here, sitting on the okay. the fence. Uh, she says good day. Uh, what what brings you through? Um, just had a couple of questions for you. Uh, we're on the way to the capital, so we just wanted to stop by. <clears throat> um, has anyone recently stopped in your town also on the way to the capital? Mm, well, uh, being along the road to the capital, we should get many visitors. Um, <clears throat> but as of late, we, we really haven't. Um, as you can see, our taverns burned down. Yeah, when did and, that happen? Oh, that happened uh, about a week ago. Okay, was that uh, a reason? Or? Huge, huge disaster for our village. It was the hub of, of all the life here and brought us lots of business from out of town. And we're a very small village and unfortunately brought terrible sadness as we've lost almost everyone in the village to the fire that night. Uh, all that survives here is me and a uh, young woman that is now widowed and a couple of kids here and there and my uh, servant, Henry. We'll eventually rebuild. We haven't decided if we're going to stay or take off we're all just really at a loss as to what's happened you as you can imagine losing you know all of our family and friends here so suddenly has caused an immense amount of grief yeah i'm sorry for your loss i i thank you kind kind boy and she like pats you on the hand <laughs> um did anything <clears throat> odd happened around the time of the fire that you noticed? Well, the... Now that you mention it, there... There was a couple of reportings. My... My servant boy reported to me that he works over at the tavern some nights for some extra money for us. That there was a group of 
people that came in the tavern and and excuse me <laughs> and uh there was a group of of people in the tavern that night and they just up and disappeared like vanished or left just vanished in front of everyone and the the two nights later the the inn burned down and everyone in it thankfully henry was working that night but he came home just in time <clears throat> he did say that there was a, a an entertainer a very odd entertainer that had been playing in the inn a few nights that week that we'd never seen around here before uh maybe i can go get Henry, maybe he can answer your questions better. And she whistles, like, between her fingers. And, um... You see kind of, like, a smaller, like, 12-year-old-ish boy come out and come up to her. And she's like, Henry, my boy, do you mind telling these, uh, heroes? May I venture to say, uh, what... Uh, uh it's actually daring heroes? <laughs> What may have happened that night? And Henry kind of just, like, shrieks uh, when he sees you guys. <laughs> and, uh, and he, like, starts pointing at you guys. He's like, y you, all, you, you, you. And he, like, points at each of you. He, it's them. It's them. And he points to you guys at, uh, and then looks back at her scared and kind of, like, goes behind her. And he's like, they're the ones that disappeared. She, like, turns back to look at you guys, like, astonished. Uh, what is the meaning of this? It's a great question. Uh, what, are you... Are you here to hurt us? No, ma'am. Um, roughly around the haven't same time... You, haven't you devastated our community enough? <laughs> I can assure you I have no knowledge of what happened to you. Henry's still, like, peeking out from her. Did Henry, when we disappeared, did we leave our stuff behind? Your stuff? No, you left without a trace. And he like stand, or uh, he peeks back out, and he's like, "A whole table full of you. Was the only thing else? you left were your drinks." Tavern master wasn't very happy about that. Thieves, he says, and uh, eyes you up. Was there anybody else with us? No, just you four. Never seen her before, any he waves towards Cherry. The whole lot of you were quite ruckus that evening, drawing a lot of attention to yourselves. And then you just up and disappeared in front of everyone. We looked for you for hours. And the uh, old lady says, uh, I, I... Henry, they... Are you sure it was them? And he just like looks at up at her and he says, "Yes, Reed, I'm sure." I was bringing them drinks throughout the night. I've had the images of their faces emblazoned in my mind ever since. Hearing this, do we remember anything triggered by coming back here? Uh, so far, no. So far, you still have zero memory of ever being here. Henry, when we were here, did you hear any of the conversation we had? Oh, it seemed as if you were all celebrating that night. You had quite a lot of drinks. And then you took out on your tabs. How much were our tabs? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to talk to the... 
Tavern Master, I'm not sure it much matters, and he seems to, like, relax a little bit around you guys now. What did you do it? He says. Honestly, I don't remember. So, none of you remember being here before? No. You just all poofed? Basically. You didn't do it on purpose? Not that I know of. Uh, does their recounting roughly line up with the days we've been back with our memories? Or is there, like, yes. a discrepancy? Okay. It's been about a week. Uh-huh. I'd say it's been probably six days since you guys have, um, maybe five days since you guys walked into the village. Okay, perfect. Um, I just had one more question for you, Henry. Out uh, to whom? Uh, either of them, I guess. <laughs> uh, we're headed to Milper Cave nearby. Do you, know, do you know anything about that? Milper Cave, they, like, they look at each other, um, kind of stunned, and they're like, of course you want to go to Milper Cave. Why? What's there? Well, Milper Cave is only known to people that live around here. How do you even know about it? I pull out the page I ripped from the book. Uh, we found it in a book. Hmm. And uh, Rita kind of takes the page and, and reads it. She's like, people have been avoiding this place since I was a young girl. It's always been said to have all kinds of negative things that happen around it. You know, when we were little kids, we used to dare each other to try to go inside of it and stand outside the cave entrance, but always something negative seemed to happen. Your shoe would break or you would get sick the next day kids have disappeared and people say that they've gone into the caves and never come out there's a set of caves you know there's another one what's the other one Slipper cave are you saying they're connected or just nearby uh Slipper caves just south of here you would have passed it probably along the way yeah we visited that's we have ceremonies there you know that's an old tradition here of course not too many people follow it now but something when I was a teenager that the uh, young women and the very old women would get together and make a pilgrimage there once a year drink from the water uh, do you not have... too many people even know about that anymore in the cave there was a statue uh, what do you know about mm -hmm. it? Oh, the statue of Neuralis. Indeed. That's been there as long as I can remember. I do remember, though, us kind of gathering around after we would take a dip in the waters and kneeling before the statue. And we would say a prayer. Unfortunately, the practice died out after that. Some of us continue to make a pilgrimage there and, you know, leave some trinkets in front of the statue, but no one seems to remember the prayer. I see. Why do you ask? Um, we saw a, uh, a few relics on the statue, and I just wondered if there was any stories about them. Like, uh, he had some rings and a sword. I do remember a story from when I was younger of of Neuralis having uh, magical rings and being a fearsome warrior. That lines up with what I knew too. But everything that I remember of the cave is just been that statue is just made of stone. Indeed. 
just making sure, uh, just kind of wanted to hear what they represented, that's all. Uh, fortunately, those are the old ways. Not too many fo people follow them anymore, but this area is steeped in tradition. I don't even think we know why we do the things we do any longer. But we are no stranger to odd occurrences happening. It's just, you know, a group of people goes missing, and then two nights later, the inn burns down with everyone in it. No one seemed to escape except Henry here, and that's merely because he left. Can I make an uh, inside check on Henry to see if he's hiding something maybe about that night, specifically when he, she mentions it? Yeah, go ahead and roll an insight. 22. So it doesn't take much to notice um, from Henry uh, studying that he's terrified. Yeah, he's scared of you guys and the mere mention of what happened that night. He's trembling and he's really scared thinking about it. Um, his eyes kind of appear to be drifting off as if he's, you know, thinking of something, visualizing something terrifying. Uh, I'm going to walk up to him slowly and then kind of kneel down to his height <clears throat> and uh, say to him, Henry, what do you remember that night? Mm. He takes a second to kind of uh, meet your eyes. Uh, doesn't much turn his head or move his body, but he does shift his eyes to yours. As he's remembering, his lip kind of starts to quiver. He says, everybody got together that night in the inn. What was the occasion? It was just a Friday night. The bard was playing. It was his last evening there before he moved on. Everyone was allowed to go that night. Kids. And everybody did kind of go that night, except for us. I just don't understand how no one would have made it out. Why didn't you guys go? Sounds like it would have been a great evening. I had to come home and tend to Rita here, make sure that she had her medicine and her dinner. And uh, Sophia was babysitting some of the smaller kids that didn't go or couldn't go. Now, it's just the three of us and a bunch of kids. Do you remember the bard's name? No, but he was very strange. What did he look like? I sometimes have nightmares about him. Do you remember what... Everybody called him the Enchanted Bard, because it seemed like when he moved, that he moved as if he was floating. He appeared... to be very mysterious. He had hooves instead of feet. He had the head of a goat. And he played this flute. And it seemed to enchant everyone in the room. Everyone was quiet when he played. Everyone was so happy. But I did feel like those few nights he was there, people drank more, people danced more, people I had never seen dance. Tavern Keeper was making lots of money. Everyone seems so happy. He was like a goat man. If you met his eyes, he had the most fearsome red eyes. He tended to keep his hood down over his face and didn't look up much. I don't think people really noticed anything but his presence. And then, of course, you guys disappeared in the middle of a crowded room, an entire table of people who'd been drinking all night in front of everyone's eyes. You just flashed away. And then two nights later, everyone was having too good of a time. I was going to come back after I took care of Rita. 
Are you but saying... I was just so tired from working hard that day, I fell asleep. Was the goat man barred here when we were here? Oh, yes. He was here a couple of nights before you guys disappeared. Did he... He was here that whole week. Did he happen to... Did you happen to ever overhear him speaking a language you didn't understand? Oh, he definitely didn't speak much. He just played his flute. It was the most beautiful sound. And he's presumed dead in the fire as well? Oh, I imagine. I don't know how he would have left and no one else could have. Indeed. He played for hours and hours each night. But now, I just keep having dreams of his red eyes. He's always coming to find me. Nightmare Gil had? Do you get much sleep? Not since the fire. I seem like I can't sleep at all. And I don't want to, because I can't get rid of Goatman's eyes. Well, I'll tell you a little ritual that I used to do when I had bad dreams. Reed is like rubbing his back. I would draw what I saw in my dream. Draw what I saw. <laughs> and then <clears throat> I would pray to Noralis and burn the picture. And then I had have no more nightmares. And Henry looks up uh, at Rita, kind of uh, smiles at her eyes, and she, like, nods to him, and he looks back at you and nods, kind of wipes some tears away from his eyes. Thank you so much for the information, Henry. You're really brave. Uh, Henry just, like, leaves and goes back in the house, <laughs> like, to collect him himself. Nice. He's on a mission now. Nice. Well, I don't think we'll bother you any further, Rita. Uh, thank you for talking with us. Oh, yes. So should I assume that you're just passing through, or...? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and here's ten gold for to help repair the town. What the fuck? <laughs> Shouldn't give me the money, bro. She looks, she looks astonished, and uh, she takes it and says, uh, if there's anything I can do, is can I, can I offer you lunch? Can I offer you a place to, to rest for the evening and there's not much between here and the capital or are you headed to Merv Cave? We're going to try to get to the cave tonight. Well, based on the things that are going on here, I would encourage you to be careful even in good times. It's not a safe place. Thank you for the warning. She, she kind of bows and like turns around and walks back into one of the small buildings. Well, that shit's creepy. <laughs> Super creepy. At least we kind of know where we were. At least the one Why didn't you tell me about the secret of getting rid of nightmares? Why, are you having bad nightmares? Oh, yeah. shit. Hold on. Uh, I need, I need to take a five-minute break. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. I'm deaf.
Uh, okay, I must have just hit the button on my headset. Is everybody back? Yeah. Well, I am. I'm here. Okay. So Cherry uh, kind of walks up in between you guys and like just kind of throws her hands up like, I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Gravy, you also couldn't hear any of that. Well, we oh, said yeah. we walked like uh, six hours, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes, I actually yes. forgot that, too. I was like, oh, wait, fuck. I did hear that. I'm just barely keeping it together. Might be odd. Uh, oh. So, Cherry's like, <clears throat> that's pretty wild, losing your entire town in a fire? I mean, how did nobody get out? She walks up to the edge of the fence where the bluebird's still sitting on the fence, by the way. And she like looks past the gate at the the big charred spot. It seems like a sizable place. There's a bird there, eh? Yep. I can't speak bird, but I mean I'm gonna cast speak with with uh animals again. And right. And ask, uh, say hi to my blue friend. Hold up. I don't know if G's got his headphones on or not. I thought he was back. Sorry, I'm back. Okay. So, uh, Cherry said, like, you know, imagine losing your whole town in a fire. Like, how did nobody survive? And she walks up to the fence to kind of... Take a look at the area. Uh, the bluebird's still there, and uh, Gel casts speak with the animals again. <clears throat> okay. And I said hi. And the bird says, "Hello. I, I apologize. I couldn't come back. I uh, well, I mean, there wasn't much to tell you other than the village seemingly empty. But uh, I was more disturbed by the fact that there aren't any other birds here." Like have anywhere. You, have you been around this area uh, recently at all? Have you no, I had had cause to come over here, but I've never been in an area where there isn't a single bird. Yeah. Even That's with all of thing. those terror ostriches, there there were still a couple of birds here and there you could hear or would see. There's nothing here. Mm. Okay, and you, you saw nothing in the town uh, besides the burnt uh, village? No, I could hear yeah. some kids, and I saw that lady come out a couple of times, but other than just the big burn patch, there's not much. It's just silent and empty. I haven't seen any animals either. Okay. To be honest, I was a little bit afraid to... Kind of fly over the area and expose myself. Oh no, I fully understand. I mean, I'd be a little cautious too if I, I didn't see in my friends in the area or my kind. Um, thank you, thank you, though. Um, it was very brave of you to come over here and uh, do this for us. I, I don't want to risk you anymore, so please uh, be safe and take care of yourself. She uh, lands on your shoulder and kind of like makes a pecking motion, like she wants more, more food. I give her a She's little like, bit. I'll be, more, I'll be heading off. A little bit more food. And then she, uh, she takes off like over the trees southeast, uh, really quick pace. And, and I informed the, everybody in our group what the conversation about that I had with the bird. So they're aware. All right, so there's nothing really around here. No, no birds, and uh, the town is is burnt, as we 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 knew. Um, it's a little bit desolate. So Barry kind of looks over her shoulder at everybody while she's listening to you, and she's like, "It's just something not right." How could no one get out? Even in a fire, you know. 
there would be so many people there that, you know, people would have run out. They would have had time to try to put out a fire. How could they all die? My guess is they were probably dancing until they died. And Cherry looks at Jean, like, horrified at the idea. Yeah, that, uh, bard did not sound like good news. Yeah. Gravy, do you know anything about this bard? I mean, I could assume it could be more powerful. Gravy, than... roll, uh, roll a history check. Give me a history a six. So, uh, Gravy, you don't really have any additional insight. Uh, Harry, give me a history check. Nothing kind of, uh, rings bells for you either. Uh, at this point, has Gel told us about his nightmares, or is he still playing that to his chest? I told you about the first one. Yeah, um, yeah. That I had. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was about to ask you about that, that dream advice you had and stuff. So, Gel, yeah. you've been having nightmares <clears throat> the last two nights um, of the same horned goat man, red eyes, um, coming for you. And an endless chase that basically isn't allowing you to sleep so you're waking up exhausted because you're not fully sleeping you're not fully resting um, but exactly as Henry described is exactly what you've been dreaming about so you have a good visual in your mind of of what this bard could look like do I remember anything uh, specific other than what Henry has already Kind of said with the red eyes and the horns and the goat beat. And... You're just being chased by it, so you don't have a ton of other visual visuals other than the appearance. Is it uh of the goat man? It's like a satyr. Is it playing a flute or or like chasing you to weapon it's, or anything? It's just chasing them. They're running from him. Right. Uh, there is no music uh, up until this point. Okay. Cool. That they they've dreamed about. Uh, I turn to Gail and I say uh, that dream advice was just for Henry. I'm sorry, that dream advice was... Just for Henry. You cut off. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I mean... So I are you saying you made anything. it up for Henry? Yes. Okay. Put him at ease. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it'll help him, but, you know, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess well, we're just keeping... I mean, I think we have found a clue, at least. We're maybe yeah. a little bit clo closer to this situation so. yeah so it's about 6 30 p.m it's like dinner time um you you can still see rita and henry kind of like working outside like cooking something up do you guys want to take them up on their offer to stay and eat or stay the night or are you going to keep pressing on do we know how far the cave is based on the map like time wise so based on the map the refresh Because it took us like most of a day to get here, <clears throat> and the cave doesn't look that far from here. So, right. So it's about two hours per square. So it's like two hours away then. Yeah. So it's about two hours away. I think we got time to eat. You guys want to have a home cooked meal or? Yeah, I'm feeling peckish. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all want to take a look at... I don't know if it's worth it, but it, would you think... If, if, should we take a look at the, the tavern that was burned down? Or the little thing over here and see? Yeah, go ahead. You Probably notice anything? I mean... I don't know if... Anything demonic or... Markings or anything? I don't know much about that person. So you but... want to uh, investigate the burn... The scar. Yeah. Well, where the goat man was in the tavern, right? In that tavern, right, 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 right next to us, yep. burned down. Yeah. I think it's so, just uh, burn marks it, on the grass, though. So here, oh, it's, it's it's here. here, I didn't have time okay. to make the burn marks, no, that's but fine. this is can the we, gate it, to it, and 
this is like where the burn marks are. Can we just like look around this area, see if we see anything of note or anything left behind or anything in the ashes? Yeah, give me an investigation check. Ooh, I'm probably not give gonna a, do that. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Give you a bardic. No, 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 no. I, I will have disadvantage. Don't, don't give um, me. I'll anything. give it to Harry. Right, oh, good, because I need yeah. it. I'll, I'll right. ask uh, Harry. Maybe <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit tired, Harry. Maybe you want to take a look. Yeah, poke around. This fourteen. Uh, Harry, one thing you do notice is that the site is incredibly clean. It's as compared to the other things that you saw, like the church and whatnot, that still had a stone base. The tavern has no stone remaining, no steps, anything like that. And the buildings kind of around, um, they do have a stone base and a wood frame. Uh, even, you know, the two that, that remain, they're very old, but <clears throat> that's not here. Uh, just dark, like burned grass, like charred mud, everything just is black. Like it was wiped out of existence. Uh, who else is investigating the site? I mean, I can try, but it's not going to be good. <laughs> so let me. Uh, it's a five. Okay. You just. You just see an empty scar. Yeah. Cherry is like focusing very hard and. Uh, she says, hold up, and she, like, walks past the gate into, like, the black scar. She's, like, walking around you guys in a circle. And she's like, this is all char, charcoal dust. There's no footprints. I'm not leaving any footprints. She's like, you guys didn't leave any footprints. Hmm. Odd. Um, How could this be? Like, something isn't right. She kind of like runs past the gate and like gets out of there. Could be an illusion. But if it happened a long time ago, how is the magic still working? It's only like a week. Whoever. Ago. Yeah. Week. Well, I mean, it I happened know I two more. days after you guys disappeared. So like five days ago. So like I had to have been a strong. Days. Alcaster. So, when you say there's no footprints, like, so if we like kick around on the ground, will it move dust or anything like that, or is there? It's just. What do you mean? So how, anything that you're like dragging your foot through, it it just doesn't appear to to move. There's no residual dust. There's nothing moving. It's just there's no footprints. There's no change in the visual appearance. Can I make an Arcana check to check for magic? Oh, yeah, go ahead. A 10. Uh, you get kind of like a, a twinge that that there is definitely some magic in the air, but you don't know if it's coming from the village or coming from the spot. There's nice. no kind of specific anything popping up, but you do get the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. I want to take the sword of Neuralis and just kind of like drag the blade into the ground to see if I can mark like a, a line or, or anything like that with it, or if it'll make any effect to the ground. So like while you're walking and like dragging uh, the sword kind of through the charcoal, it passes like it's passing through water. There's no physical movement. It's not separating anything from anything else, but there is a visual difference almost like heat waves to you. Something well, very off to... about this. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know anything about magic, so I'll leave that up to you guys with the Wombo Mambos. <laughs> I'll, uh, <laughs> Wombo Mambo. There's two things I want to do. One, can I see the point of ignition? Like, does it look like the fire spread out from one point, if that makes sense? No. Okay. Everything looks exactly the same. It's just black and there's no uh burned pieces of like beam or right. burned sticks or anything like that it's just 
The last thing I want to do is That's take out the uh, abyssal parchment and place it on the ground. Like in the abyssal parchment, hole. what? Place it on the ground in the burned area. Nothing happens. Okay. I'm stumped. Uh, I wouldn't mind looking. Hmm. I guess uh, Gravy thinks it might be an illusion or some sort of demonic magic. Um. Just has a wager that whoever disappeared us is probably stronger than us. You think somebody made you guys disappear, and that that correlates to there is some sort of magic going on here, and there may be an illusion in the village or on the tavern site. Yeah, or even just specifically like the illusion related to the charcoal, like something. Are you relating this to the group? Uh, yeah, I'd express my thoughts out loud. We were teleported out of the inn. Could they have teleported the whole inn? Maybe. There was no inn where we woke up. True. There's also something that you saw. There. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was in a Along tree. Those lines, we just like, it. You guys could have still been in the inn. And... Yeah. Maybe the inn was inside us all along. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> um, under a hunch, I'm going to go give... Uh, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. I'm going to give the old lady Great. a hug. Oh. oh. Uh, she she kind of turns, like, send you, like, she's, like, stirring her pot, and she's like, oh, 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 oh well, oh, and she just kind of uh, leans into the hug. She really needed one, too. It's been a rough couple of days, and she, like, pats you on the back, and she's like, is everything okay? Just wanted to ask if we could join you for dinner. Oh, of course, I, the offer still stands. Uh, when I hug her, I'm trying to check her dimensions to make, <laughs> make sure she's not an illusion. Uh. Uh, she feels very real to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, she, in the kind of a side bit here, there's a table, um, and she kind of sets a table with, like, several bowls of, like, whatever she's been cooking, and uh, she waves you guys over to kind of, like, gather around it and uh, eat. She's like, eat up, eat up. What made you decide to stay? I would have thought for sure that you folks would have been hightailing it out of here after hearing out about what was going on, knowing that the last time you were here, apparently. Can't help but feel partially responsible. Well, doesn't add up, and we're by ourselves, but all we can do is just try to rebuild every day, and got quite a few kids to take care of now. Indeed. All of whom are without their parents and don't know much different. Uh, Harry and Gravy, are you guys eating as well? Yeah. <clears throat> uh... So where will you head next? She hmm. says. Well, after we're done here, we'll probably head to the cave and then probably rest there for the night and then head on to the capital in the morning. Well, I can offer you uh, plenty of places to sleep for the evening, uh, but I, I will warn you that it, it can get a little bit scary at night. Everything's just so quiet. Yeah, well, Sometimes we hear these shrieking sounds of what sounds like birds. Yeah, we ran into that. Hopefully, Henry here starts getting some better sleep uh, once he does what you advised him to do. There have been several nights I've caught him 
kind of sleepwalking towards the end. Sleep running, I would say. Down the road. Poor boy. Indeed. I think blames himself a little for what's happened, and he's like heads down, like eating, like he's like zoned out still. <laughs> I'm sure he does, but I can't imagine he bears any responsibilities. How do you know Henry? Where did where didn't you meet him? Oh, Henry's parents uh, lived here beside me for the entirety of of the mother's life and then uh, they were taken ill by a bad cold a few years back and uh, I just kind of took over caring for Henry now he cares for me he's a good boy Henry, uh, like, raises his head and he, uh, like, smiles at her and he's like, I'm just glad that you didn't decide to go to the inn that night, Rita. She says, yeah, well, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse to be a survivor mm. here these days. What do you guys think? You want to stay the night here, or you want to move on? I mean, I was thinking we'd move on, but it's, it's up to you guys. Well, I was thinking above the table. I was thinking maybe we could stay and see if Henry has another sleep walking incident, and maybe we'll get some more information. But besides yeah, that, I don't really have any other ideas. So, she said I might sleep walk. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Mm -hmm. so Rita kind of was listening to your conversation and she's like well you're more than welcome and she's like starts cleaning up after dinner I'm going to be heading to bed here soon and then Henry has to get up early so I'll uh, help her I can show up. you your accommodations she shows you like a building kind of uh, catty corner to hers here uh, there's plenty of of places to to sleep in that house and then there's a building you can't see like here um and that's where sophia and the kids are but they've already turned in for the evening okay we'll we'll uh put up in that house thank you mm. Mm -hmm. and she like disappears and goes into this house with henry we should sleep in shifts <laughs> yeah. Is there a window on this side of the building? There's no windows in this house. Is there like a patio? Just a door or... in the front. Okay. Just a door in the front. Right uh, here. Is there any chairs inside? I guess I'll just take a chair from the table and sit it out the front of the door um, and kind of say, you know, we should sleep in shifts and uh, if you're on watch, you should probably sit out here just in case. Who's taking the first watch? We'll take first watch. I think Gail should try and sleep through the night. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. If he can't. Yeah. So, uh, in whoever is, uh, Cherry's going to take the first watch. So, Cherry, uh, a couple of hours into you guys retiring, uh, Cherry comes over and she kind of like shakes uh, Jean and she's like, I think we ought to get up. I just don't feel right about something's going on. Those birds have been uh, humming for hours, and you guys have heard the birds kind of, like, trilling uh, in the distance through the evening, but gotten accustomed to it and kind of slept off. But now you can hear uh, that the trilling is kind of like a faster pace and it gotten much louder. And... Um, Cherry walks back out front, and as she does, you guys see Henry fucking trotting <laughs> across the road. Uh, I'm going to follow him, but, like, stay far back so I'm not to disturb him. 
so when you're following him, you he appears to be like like running, at, but like hiding behind things, like hiding behind a post, hiding behind a bush. Like mm. uh, he runs into the site, and he uh, kind of goes in, and then like walks around, like he's walking around something, and like squats down and hides. He's just squatting there in the darkness. Uh, I look around and see if I can spot anything he's hiding from, I guess. You also notice Gal is sleepwalking. (laughs) (laughs) Same thing. Definitely walking like he's being followed. Right. uh, Scared and hurried. Towards the uh, tavern as well. Kind of goes uh, further in. Walks around, kind of in a circle, walks back, squats down. And he's just squatting there. Uh, is the trilling still happening? Trilling is still happening. It's like uh, just kind of constantly increasing. Is it coming from a certain direction or? It's all around. Like it's all around the entire area. Yeah, yeah. Probably like five miles in all directions. Yeah, I guess I'll just peer around and see if I can see anything they're running from and I guess that's it. And you see uh, Rita kind of coming out of the house, like rubbing her eyes, looking around. She's looking for Henry. I point towards where he, where he is. Uh, Gravy and Harry, you guys are still asleep. Uh, Cherry asks Jean uh, as he like passes her. Like, should I, should I get the others up or just keep letting them sleep? And it isn't until you guys see Gel go past that she just turns around immediately and goes back and wakes up Harry, Harry <laughs> and Gravy. Perfect. She kind of, like, shakes you guys and lets you know, like, something's going on with Gel. I go to catch up with Cherry. I also go with Cherry. Uh, Cherry walks right up to the edge of the fence, kind of like the natural gate and then kind of like squats down behind it and is like peeking through to keep an eye on what Henry and Gail are doing. But they're just squatting as well, looking around like FNAF, like right. seriously, like they're really scared. Do they look awake or are they actually sleepwalking? They, uh, they look like they're awake, but you can tell they're sleepwalking because their movements are like really limp and slow. Uh. Rita kind of creeps up to the other edge of the fence. She uh, she sees you guys. Uh, Jean, where Jean Gravy and Harry, where are you? Uh, I'm with. I'm trying to draw. Gal and Henry's line of sight. You're trying to get their attention? No, I'm or... trying to see if they have some sort of like triangulated viewpoint. The like, place? are they looking at the same place? Are they standing in the same area? So, or... where are you at when you're doing this? Move your, Move your token there. So, you're right in there in between them. Okay, they're looking right through you. Like, they're both focused on right here. Hmm. There's nothing material. There's nothing that you see. Henry kind of, like, uh, shrinks down. Like, he's trying to make himself even smaller. Uh, Yells, like, looking around. Like, he's looking for a way out. I'll stand in the spot that I think the satyr was standing. Forward. And just look for anything. Uh, Rita kind of whispers to Jean, do you think that young man should be over there? Let him work his magic. Do I have a tinder box? No, I don't. Uh, 
I'll cast light in my hand, like a glowing orb, and see if maybe the magical energies illuminate any shadows or uh, tracings of another magic at hand. Um, but uh, I'd be interested in starting a fire. I just don't have any means to do so. Um, I stay to I the can. party. Yeah, I'll come over and uh, cast uh, oh. green flame blade and then stab the ground. Yeah, I want you to stab where I was just standing. Yep. Uh, when you cast light, <clears throat> you see, uh, Gene, you see behind Gravy when he casts light, like in between the two of you, you see like the caped back of a horned figure here, like staring at Gravy. Gravy, you see bright red eyes of a horned figure looking right at you, like within mm. five feet. I'll swing my sword at it. I draw my bow, but hold fire because I don't want to hit Gravy. <laughs> and the. Uh, as, Gene, as you swing your sword, the figure disappears again. Mm. But uh, it, did, it did appear as if it was fleeing, like this, this way. So, as soon as it does that, I yell for Gravy to step back, and then I cast uh, Arms of Hadar. And Henry also, at that moment, is, like, screaming. Yeah. Uh, and the light wakes him up. So... So he's kind of, like, laying on his back, screaming. And, uh... You cast Arms of Hadar. Basically, it hits any creature within ten feet of me. And then they lose their reaction. Yeah, it's 13 DC. So you hit. Okay. And then everybody else, uh, go ahead and uh, roll initiative. Roll damage. Five. Necrotic. Does that count me, or is that I'm still asleep? You're still asleep. Actually, no. You woke up with the light as well, so go ahead and do it. Thank God. Actually, it's one more D6, hold on. So seven necrotic damage. I gotta set up a character for Satyr's Game in it. Just use Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Quick thinking, by the way, Gene and, and Gravy, both of you guys. <laughs> Pinks.
<clears throat> While we're doing this, I'm just cur curious. So, like, um, Harry, you said you like prepared your your bow or whatever. So in D and D, when you when you do a preparation or something like that, how does that how does it work? Um, it, so as a react, you're holding a reaction, mm -hmm. and you're asking the DM uh, for a trigger. So when I see an enemy, I will attack, mm -hmm. and when an enemy enters the screen, it kind of slides between the initiatives in a sense, meaning mm -hmm. like. You hold you, your action until yeah, a certain thing happens it. that you describe. Basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do it so, in and out of combat, as, like in and out of initiative. Yeah, true. Um, some DMs make it so that when you hold a spell, you've casted it, meaning that the slot is uh, used up. Mm -hmm. And some people allow spells to be held until they're cast. Um, so such that uh, I wait this round for an enemy to appear, an enemy doesn't appear, and your turn comes again. Um, then you just take a turn. You don't really get like two. It's not delaying your turn. It's holding for a specific trigger. And if it gets all the way back around you and that trigger hasn't happened? Yeah, then it's just, uh, oh, shit, well... Nothing popped up. Yeah. Uh, I will take my turn now. Okay. Or I will take a new turn on a new round. If if you were preparing like a spell, like you said, would that spell slot be gone then? And it just like depends kind of just... on the DM for okay. me. I've met people who will burn it, and other people who say, "Well, you didn't cast it, so." Okay. Mm -hmm. And one Thank other you. thing you can do um, that you may not know is uh when you're in combat like this you roll initiative if you're first you can delay your turn until someone else's or second or whatever like you could delay your oh, turn if you don't, until if mine it's... or whatever you know okay so you just say i delay and then like you'll go the next in the initiative after that or so you would just say like gravy would say delay. i delay until gene's turn or whatever and then he can okay. take his action gotcha. then sort of thing gotcha mm -hmm. and i have met DMs like me who say, actually, I would prefer if you take your turn, or right. because uh, Gene and Gravy have a 10 and 11, mm -hmm. I'll allow you to switch that order. Mm -hmm. um, right, but no or I'm kind case. of the guy to say, like, well, I want you to hold a reaction or take your turn. Because, uh, let's say it's like Baldur's Gate or something, or I think it's Divinity, you can like delay your turn. Um, you ain't delaying any turns with me. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's just too confusing. I'm just like, yeah. Eh, yeah. you have a 20 and they have a 19. And if you want to delay your turn, then you're t you're technically just holding a reaction. So Right. Based on so, me. But I met people who are like, yeah, okay, just go later. Yep. Thanks, guys. So, Gene, you cast your um, Arms of Hater and uh, you see the... Sater here. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so the uh, Sater that's visible to you um, succeeds on a strength saving throw. So he takes half, so three, three damage, three necrotic damage specifically. So he takes three necrotic damage and he kind of turns to you and like hisses at you with like glowing red eyes and then like rises like up, like making himself taller um, on his hooves and like pulls his hood back. And you can see uh, black fur and goat horns, uh, mm. a really like muscly, gruesome face, big fangs very pissed off great <laughs> um oh i guess it's not my turn all 
Let me roll for cherry real quick. I guess I could yell, um, since that's not an action. I say, Cherry, get Henry and get out. Uh, Cherry kind of runs up. Henry's stunned, laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. Manages to grab him and uh, runs away without getting out within the distance of Henry. She takes them back here by the house and they kind of crouch down, watching what's going on. Uh, Rita's still kind of crouched here on the ground when she sees them go she like runs back and stays with Henry Cherry returns okay. uh Harry so I can see the goat man now you can see the goat man now uh Gravy's light is still glowing from his hand as well wait what is this I don't want to lose him I cast Hunter's Mark Mm. Ding, ding, ding. Mark. And then I fire my bow. Do, do, do. There it is. Nice. Hits or. So your oh I didn't see it pop up. Yeah, scroll down. So that hits. Okay. And my hunter's mark. Nine damage. So your uh, hunter's mark in combination with your bow kind of slams into the satyr at his hip and he seems like shocked and looks down, um, grabs onto the arrow, like it's just kind of plastered him in the and the hip and is like gripping on to it. He like kind of stumbles back on his back hoof and uh, like spits. Nasty. Still hissing and kind of looking around from side to side at all of you that have surrounded him at this point. He, uh, He turns to Gel as if uh, he's kind of just come back into his thought process and um, he will pull out a, a short bow that he's got here and shoot at Gel. Is he next to me? He is. Um, sometimes ranged attacks have disadvantage because they're threatened. They're within five feet of an enemy. It would miss as a 13 anyhow. But that's... Yeah, he's going to miss anyways. Um, and then that is his turn. Gravy. Hmm. Uh, can I, uh, I, I say to Gravy, whatever you do, don't let him play his flute. And at hearing this, Oscar kind of, uh, the satyr's name is Oscar, you don't know that yet, but <laughs> Oscar kind of turns and looks at Gravy and, like, has, like, a, a smirk creeping up, like, saliva dripping off of his fangs as he looks back at Gel. He still clearly wants Gel very badly. But he uh, he is aware that he's surrounded by you guys. Mm -hmm. he just um. Hold on. Uh. Let me pull up the hunter's mark. Da, da, da. You have advantage on any perception or survival checks to find it. Okay. Uh, 
Are we still in combat? Are we? Or? Yeah. You're not still in combat. I look around as soon as he disappears to see if I can't find him. I cast invisibility. Roll um, perception, Harry. Okay. Nineteen. Um, from what you see, you see on the ground, <clears throat> uh, at a, a further distance, you see some, uh, like, kind of bushes moving, and, uh, you see his bow dropped on the ground, but he is gone. You don't see him anywhere, uh, within your radius. He's ran off into the woods over there. So you have a 90 feet range on that, so he's n at least 90 feet away from you. And you saw him uh, run over here into these woods. There's no way I can hit him. He's invisible and far. He's gone. We can't keep getting... No, we're not as fast as him, I'm guessing. I know I'm not at the moment, but I don't know if anybody else is. But Do you want to try? I mean, if he's out on the 90... 90 feet, I don't know if we can even... Gotcha. I'm worried about the birds. Jump on the horses. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I didn't necessarily mean catch him, but, like, follow his trail in any way. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. follow well, his Your horses in your wagon are, are still just, like, back here. The horses are, like, tied up to the fence yeah. with uh, some hay and stuff here for them. Since Harry's good at tracking, Harry's gonna go over where he disappeared in the bushes to see if he can get a trail. Uh, give me a nature check. Nat 20. Booyah. Booyah. Wow. So you're nat 20. You can see very clearly um, that there are no signs of any kind of pathway being made through the bushes. No footprints. Another illusion. Branches. He had to have teleported or something. He's just gone. Sorry about that. Um, do we see his bow on the ground? I guess we already saw that. I don't know if we want to. Yeah, his up. bow is at. Uh, here, Harry, you're over here. You. This is where you yeah. saw his bow drop in this little clearing before it goes into the bushes and. Um, you do not know which way he went from those bushes. There's no indication that that he passed through. But if he had, you would know. He's essentially disappeared right. there. Yeah. Just like we did. Just like you guys did. And just like he appeared. Is, uh, I guess Gal could tell me, is Gal still scared? Gel's kind of just like standing there looking around like what happened because all of this happened within just a few right. seconds. Um, but he's kind of coming to like what what's going on. What did I see when I was sleepwalking? Do so I remember anything? When you were sleepwalking, you saw you believed that you were being chased by the goat man again. But you were inside the tavern. And you were looking for a place to hide. Could he uh, see Henry? Much go, like... <laughs> did you I did, see Henry? Yeah. You did see Henry cowering around the corner hmm. on the floor in the tavern. Kind of like gave him a look and did like the shh mark when you saw um, the satyr kind of come in. Satyr was on the stage sitting on a stool. Um, so you can see kind of the visuals of the tavern um, in remembrance from your dream and kind of come in. There's like a bar here, two rooms, one room here where Harry, uh, Henry was, one room here where you were, and then uh, all like open uh, through here, through here. And then a stage was right here. These two squares would have been kind of like a stage. So the satyr kind of appeared 
from there. He was sitting on his stool, getting ready to play his flute when you woke up. Did I see anybody else besides uh, Henry and myself in, in there and, and him and the Seder? You did. The entire tavern was full of people that didn't seem to be afraid or be being chased by him. It was as if just you and Henry knew that he was dangerous. Everybody else is like chatting, laughing, um, drinking. It was a very vivid dream. Did I see Gravy or Harry or Jean or anybody else that I recognize? Any of my comrades? You did not. Okay. Um, I, I try to kick some of the dust again to see if the illusion's like gone now that the sage is gone. So it's the same as it was before. It's dark. Yeah. It's nighttime and you can't see like super detail, but it's just kind of as if, you know, water slightly tremor like moves and then it, it returns to the blackness. Okay. You can see Rita um, back across the road. Cherry's walked back, um, checking on Henry and Rita to make sure that they're OK. Uh, Henry is crying and um, you know, Cherry asked him if he's okay, and he says it wasn't like it wasn't like before. I didn't know I was dreaming, and I saw him. And he points to Gel. I saw you too, Henry. Did you did you did you see the same thing as me? And I described what I saw. And that's where we'll end it for this week. Mm. No. <laughs> So, as a recap, you guys have left the Lord's Manor, packed up and raided the kitchens. You have set off with Cherry in tow, left the townspeople with the Lord, soldier, and priest to take care of, some holy water, and a bunch of weapons to defend themselves. You took off on a road towards Leafly Village and went to explore the cave at Milvpra. And along the way, you were kind of ambushed in the middle of the road by a herd of squawking, terrifying ostriches. Mm -hmm. Giant, powerful legs that had a hunting party surround you and attempt to eat you. But when you defeated them and then tried to taste some of the meats and harvest their corpses, made Jean very sick and tasted horrendous. When she arrived at Leafly Village, you met Rita, who told you about the troubles the village had been experiencing, where the majority of the townspeople have all up and burned up in a fire in the tavern. After a group of mysterious people, we then find out where you disappeared at the reports of her young helper, Henry, mm -hmm. who has been having nightmares just like Gel, and who has been sleepwalking. You decided to join them for dinner and determined that there was something not so great with the burn site of the tavern. Was not responding physically in ways that you think that it would have and stay the night Gail and Henry are sleepwalking in fear from what you find out from Grievy's illumination is the satyr as described who once hit and enters combat seems very interested in Gel. Looks mm -hmm. around, realizes it's not going to be as easy as he thinks, and disappears. Leaves behind mm -hmm. his bow, disappears into thin air. One skill. Yeah, most people do. Let's just say who doesn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so about what time of the night is it, would you say? Just so we know when we get back. At one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You've kind of adjusted to the sound of these birds kind of terrorizing the area at night yeah. you did discover that the birds uh are not a normal occurrence there and deafen do a lot of damage and that the site of the tavern is clearly affected by some kind of hmm. yeah 
Okay. GG. That was fun. GG. Thank you for guys being patient. I had absolutely nothing ready, and I'm sorry, because this was kind of like a big deal that you guys have been avoiding, I guess, for a couple of weeks. Uh, expected you guys well, to be I mean, yeah, here a lot earlier, this, but... This um, I'm excited for the capital one day. Yeah. Are you feeling better, Cricket? If you ever get there. I am feeling better. I've been sitting here eating uh, saltines and <laughs> lots, lots of saltines. water. Yeah, you seem to sound a little better as we kept going. Yeah, riding that boat for the majority of it. <laughs> hmm. I didn't sleep, like, at all last night, so, like, I've only slept, like, two or three hours because I had to sleep sitting up. So every time mm. I, like, tried to, like, lay down, I would instantly, like, have to throw up and, like, have really, really bad heartburn. And, like, mm. I was throwing up acid in the medicine I was taking, so... Mm. Yay! <laughs> yeah, so it's fucking awful, and I just wanted to sleep. True. But now I'm awake. I feel better, dude. Feel better. Thanks. Um. So, it should be fresh in your mind. You will do the recap for me, and think about who you just met. All right. Okay. Bye -bye. Sounds good. Love you, bye. bye. See you guys. Thank you.